applause for these ministers. <laughs> that really concludes the service. What else is there to say? I love you too, and I cannot help it. And do you have a sense of what you represent, Seattle Unity, in the world, in the movement, in the world of new thought, in the world of possibilities, in the world of creation, of creative flow, of possibilities? That you, your life, your presence here, your presence here today, your service, your consciousness, your giving, your caring, your community, the sense of this. And you've stepped into and taken on a role that would have already have finished most communities off. This change, this change, this decision to, to change, to let go, to step into the next grandest iteration of yourself. The next grandest iteration of yourself, an idea bigger than any of us have had. An idea bigger than anyone could have individually. An idea that is collectively a mind-blowing idea, a new way of being in the world, a new stasis, a neostasis, out of the homeostasis, out of the old way, out of the way that it's always been. And not leaving what matters, but bringing all that matters, all that cannot be threatened, all that will sustain, all that will grow, all that is real, and all that matters through you, with you, as seeds for this next iteration of yourselves as a community. So I bow to you for it. I've been at this a long time, and I've seen a lot of contrast and polarities. So take a deep breath into, as a community, as a spiritual community, and as equipped and spiritual leaders to take the forefront of creating a world that works for all. You are awesome and then some. So turn to somebody and tell them, we're awesome. We're awesome, we're awesome, we're awesome. We're awesome and then some. We're awesome and then some. And then today, I want us to look at this little part of us that can sometimes usurp our awesomeness. These little tendencies that we've inherited through a conscious and sometimes not so conscious evolution. This tendency for our reptilian behavior. Any snakes or lizards among us? That's, these are the people that were there yesterday. <laughs> so think about then, as I kind of call over this polarity of the human, the species of the human, and if you believe what unity teaches, we are alpha and omega, everything under the sun, all that is. So then it's like, well, I'm not going to say that I'm critical. You may as well. Do you criticize sometimes? I'm not raising my hand. Yes. <laughs> well, we already know. <laughs> it's too late. It looks good on you. See, you don't mind. You don't mind. You may as well say then, hey, I criticize at times. Now, what happens to your spirit when you're criticizing? When you get critical, what happens to the spirit? What happens to that love, that joy, that grace? What happens when we step into a criticizing, nitpicking, fault-finding, blaming, shaming? What happens to the spirit? <sighs> Heavy, diminished, constricted. So there's real consequences of this. And then there's another option. So then any time, I can't, what's it like before we go there? What's it like when you're, getting, when you're on the other end of criticism? What's that like when somebody's criticizing you? Hurtful, painful, stressful, disappointing, despairing. 
So not much creative flow, not much vitality, not much exuberance, not much uh, possibility there for us. So then any one of these things, any one of these kind of regressed behaviors, any one that we can shift out of carries a powerful and exponential effect to the spirit, to the life, to the life experience, to relationships, to workplaces, to spiritual communities. So it's not just a notion that what I do affects the whole. Holistic thinking. So there's nothing I do, no action that I take that is not impacting the whole. So if, then if I want a better effect there, if I want more life and love and joy and possibility there, there's one place to work. This is the good news of the day. There's one place to bring this change, one place to make this contribution from through the one that I can actually do something about and to do something with, the self. So uh, this worksheet is available to you back there for those of you that weren't here, and it looks at the polarities of the human species and the stress that's caused if we operate from or kind of reside more in one of the one polarity versus the possibility if we reside in the other. So as I call off a few of these, I'd love you to re reflect and call in response. One is stressful, one is more in the lines of grace. God realized, actualized, consciously expressed grace. So stress or grace. Demanding, yes. willful, yes. stubborn, yes. offering understanding, yes. self-regulated, yes. taking responsibility for self, yes. sensible, Uptight, serious, defensive, explaining, justifying, making excuses, objective, clarity. Willing, adaptive, resilient, sensitive, overly sensitive, <laughs> chip on our shoulders, taking things personally. Underhanded, secretive, covert. Responsive, thoughtful. Sound easy? Are you up to it? If it's ever going to be, then it becomes here. It belongs here. Now get a sense of the allure to be the other. This is what we're dealing with. So like today, if you leave, it's been a great day already. This beautiful worship music, these songs, these affirmations, the back in touch with our spirit, what is true about us, what was always perfect and whole and complete, what will always remain perfect and whole and complete. So in the absolute, all is well. Back here at the ranch, however, <laughs> we've got some emotions to navigate, right? And some personalities to come out from under. 
that carries with it this demanding, willful, stubborn, sensitive, easily provoked, slow to recover aspects of self. So where does it leave us if this is kind of what's running the show? Where will it leave you if we literally don't jump that track, that old, archaic, 2,000, over 2,000 years of recorded history, this has been the way of it, and jump the track and lay a new track that says in situation to situation and interaction to interaction, person to person, moment to moment, I'm going to lay and run a new track even with the temptation to go back. So let's see what we're dealing with here. So imagine you woke up in your own bed. The eyes are open for the first time and the alarm did not go off. (sighs) Why me? Then you go to the sink, you put your toothpaste out on the toothbrush, and a big glob comes out. Can you relate? What's its reaction? (laughs) Then you put bread in the toaster. Well, remember when you ate bread. (laughs) Bread goes in the toaster, and it comes up black. Burnt toast. All right, put your right hand up. This is the victim salute. Everybody, right on your forehead. Oh! So this is what we're dealing with. The allure to fall into that. The allure to fall into that. And there's a payoff to that reptilian mind. There's a payoff to the fear mind. There's a high, so to speak, of getting to be victimized by something. So think about any one of those little situations, who you would be, what it would be like to be in those situations if this didn't run the show. How would you meet those situations differently? Laugh. Laugh. Practical. Practical. It happens. Calmer, keeping myself together, take a breath. Spiritual practices, things we've been taught also for 2,000 years. In those times where we get triggered or bristled or upset, that there's another path, another track to jump on and to run on that includes pausing for a minute, presencing myself, and then proceeding a track that runs as more grace, more possibility, and a new way of being in the world, a radical new way of being in the world. So what would stop you from this? What would keep you bound in that old painful way, clearly observant, clearly awake to how stressful it is, What allure, what would keep us running there? Habits, patterns. So this requires us, yes, to jump off of those patterns, to interrupt those patterns, and to be consciously a circuit breaker. A circuit breaker for those patterns, a circuit breaker to interrupt those patterns. And to do it interaction to interaction and piece by piece. It includes things like this, and this is what's been provided for you out there in the lobby from um, our work yesterday. There's also an hour of teaching relative to this at MarthaCreek.com and then the YouTube videos, and they're all free. So you're welcome to, if this teaching is resonant with you, if it's it's really striking a chord in you to get close to this teaching and to find it any way and anywhere you can. And you can start uh, today. So get a sense of what it would be like to define yourself not in relationship to someone else. So I stand where I stand. They stand where they stand. 
I'm into my own convictions, what matters to me, and I accept their convictions are not mine. Their convictions, their beliefs, their actions belong to them. Get a sense of just doing that one thing, what that would be like. And the grace to yourself, grace offered to yourself in doing that. Get a sense then as anxiety comes in, as it will, as stress arises, as it will. We're wired for it. What it would be like to pause in that stress and to do nothing until you regulate that stress. Like putting an oxygen mask on you first. So before I proceed, before I fire off an email, before I fire off a phone call, I'm going to pause and presence myself and be aware that what I'm putting out into the world is what I'm creating a world of. So there's such power then and possibility in taking a pause. Pause, presence, proceed. Get a sense of keeping a clearer distinction between fact and feeling. So I'm broke. Fact or feeling? I have minus $13 in the bank. So I'm broke is a concept. I'm broke is a concept. It carries with it an emotional baggage, an emotional heavy, heavy, heavy weighted baggage that we've inherited for 2,000 years. So it's coming out of those concepts not operating in a world of concept, but operating in a world that I can speak in factual and actual terms. So imagine you leave today, you're very filled up, you're full, you're happy, it's joyous. Oh my God, it's a great day. If I was any better, I'd be a twin. And you go out and you've got a flat tire on the car. That quick it can go. Now, fact or feeling? Fact. It's a flat tire. It's awful. It's tragic. This shouldn't have happened. So whatever I name it becomes my experience. Basic unity. Whatever I name a thing, I've just created an experience of that. So there's real power in naming things what they are, as they are. Get a sense of if you did not expect or demand other people to think like you. If you dropped expecting them to think like you do or to do things like you do. What kind of vitality that would say for you? How much energy flow that would say for you? Energy that's being leaked out trying to teach a cat to bark. And we do it. I do it still. I watch people do it. It's like, bark, 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 honey, bark. Here's a book on barking, honey. Here, here, here. Did, did you read your book on barking, honey? Like, look at them, honey. They all bark. Look, look. They can bark. They have special powers. Then, then we go back and go bark. And it says, meow. So who stressed me? Who drained my vitality? Who drained and blocked creative life force through me? Not on, my, not on this new track. That old painful track. What if you begin to take responsibility for your own emotions? That means then after today, no body can be the matter with you. What would we talk about? <laughs> what if you also refused, if you stopped allowing anybody to pin responsibility for their emotions on you? What would that do for your vital life force? So when they come up and go, you're the matter with me, if you no longer believe that. 
It's like, I see that you believe it, but I no longer believe that. If I could fix your emotions, they would have been fixed a long time ago. It's a full-time job to work here. Full-time job to work in, from the inside of us. So think about now somebody in your life that's reactive, a reactor type. And get a sense of how you could be in the face or in an interaction with a reactor type and be less reactive to their reactivity. So the more ratcheted up they get, the more jacked up they get, the calmer you get. So that you're the one that brings presence to an interaction. Get a sense of being that in the world. Grace. Being the grace. Bringing grace. Here's a good one. In any situation, what if I looked at how I have participated in the problem? What's my part of this? Now, they may have done that much, and I just did that much. That's where all the pain is. That's also where all the possibility is. So instead of trying to get them shift out of their part, if I just clean up this part, it holds all the power in the whole world. Is in me taking responsibility for what my part is. Now this is going to be important, particularly here at Seattle Unity, as you go forward in this change, in this saying goodbye, and watching what you've enjoyed be destructed, be taken down, be leveled. And then the tension in that, the loss in that, to witness that. And then the time it's going to take to watch something else rise up out of that. The new phoenix of Seattle Unity, the new being of Seattle Unity. To accept that tension, stress, anxiety, and grief are part of our human learning processes. Stress, tension, anxiety are part of being human. So it's a part of my own humanness. It's a part of the spectrum of humanity. So then get a sense of being the leader that you are, the leaders that you are for the world, the leaders you are for this Seattle community and Unity Seattle and what it would be like, how it's going to change your own trajectory as a leader and the trajectory of this community as it unfolds if you accept this humanness in people. So when anxiety or fear or um, stress arises, you understand how normal it is. So then I don't have to get stressed when they do. And I don't have to get more anxious when they're anxious. That there is another way to be in this change, in this loss, and this feeling of being out of control and needing to know and demanding certainty in a time when there won't be much. Or at least we won't be able to see it. And a big one, which is to allow time for emotional process. Allow time for things to process. So reflect on your own life. And when you had a loss or change or grief or um, anything that was painful for you, that it took its own timing for that to let go of you. Can you relate to that? That it had its own timing. It wasn't as you preferred, which would have been quick. But it lets go on its own timing. And that's going to be the case as we watch this change here unfold also. And then... Your, the biggest contribution I believe you can make to yourself, that I can make to a community and to the world, the biggest contribution I can make in the name of God, in the name of master teachers, is to restore myself, to keep myself atoned at one moment, aligned with the grace 
of source, the grace of life, the grace of creator, and the grace of whatever you believe created you, as to the degree that I'm aligned with that, at one with that, atoned, and in the spirit of that, I'm going to be a different person here in the world, outside of the personality and outside of this regressed mind, functioning from the mind that is up here, a mind that was naturally more collaborative, thoughtful, resilient, innovative, more in line with my own nature. This is why you'd rather be with your pets than people. Dogs and cats are more enlightened than most of us. They're less triggered. They get over things quicker. They don't bite when a bark will do. So let's see if we can move it on up a notch or two out of this regressed state, out of this old pattern, and move into the patterns of being that are more self-managing. So as I read these, see if you can get a sense of this of being this in the world. Clear and conscious, aware of creation, of creator. Realizing that, expressing that, consciously creating as self-managing, self-regulated, resourceful, aware of options open, shedding light, a source of light, resilient and flexible, offering understanding and holding a breath of understanding, calmer, more sensible, collaborative and innovative, clear, objective, and purposeful. Offering grace, aware of grace, and living grace. So we dedicate this time and this teaching to a full step into that. A full step as that. And we begin again consciously, individually, collectively, as a community in and for the conscious evolution of humanity, creating a world that works for all, and we begin again right here and right now. And so it is. <laughs>